Duke saw things from a different perspective because he was a doctor, so he used a lot of medical terms and so forth. And, but I thank God for Dr. Luke. Luke chapter 17, starting at verse number one. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God reads from the New Living Translation. One day Jesus said to his disciples, that's every one of us sitting under the sound of our voice and those that are even watching online. There will always be temptation to sin, church. But what sorrow awaits the person who does the tempting? We got to be careful. Hmm. Woe, one translation say, to the one that calls the temptation. Hmm. Lord, help us. Verse 2, Christ said it would be better to be thrown into the sea with a mile millstone hung around your neck than to cause one of these little ones to fall into sin. So he says, watch yourselves. Little ones don't mean just a child, those that are young in their faith. So we have a mandate as professing Christians that has been walking with God for any length of time to understand for those that's fresh, freshly coming into the household of faith, my God, that we have an obligation to make sure that our lifestyle, what we do and what we say, my God, does not call someone, my God, to turn away from God because of us. That's what he means, woe to the one that causes that problem. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So if another believer sins, the doctor says, rebuke that person. Then if there is repentance, that means turn from, forgive. Even if that person wrongs you seven times a day. Not for the same sin, but for different sins. And even if it's the same one, I'm going to give it to you. Forgive them. <laughs> if that person wrongs you seven times a day, and each time turns again and asks for forgiveness, you and I, I and you must forgive. Father God, I thank you that your grace empower me to do what I cannot do within my own strength. Empower me by your grace, Father God, to deliver an encouraging but truth word tonight. Save, encourage, reconnect. Let the people be willing to release. Let the people be honest. Oh my God, as we do a self-evaluation, Father God, start from the pulpit to the pews. Father God, this is one of importance. Lifestyle still matters. And this will hinder us from possessing that which you have called us to possess if we choose not to release. So Lord, I thank you that chains are being broken. I thank you that yokes are really being destroyed. We not only confess that, but we believe that. Lord, we thank you that we are healed according to your word by your stripes. That's not just physical healing. After you heal us, Father God, you will restore us. So Father God, restore us back to our original condition. Let us come back up under the mandate of, oh my God, Genesis 1:26, when you gave us dominion over the earth. Father God, we thank you for the privilege to do business in your kingdom tonight. Let your kingdom fully manifest tonight, Lord. Teach, Father God, with accuracy. Teach. Let your kingdom manifest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mm. As I stated last week, you can go online and subscribe to our YouTube if you have not already. Subscribe to Going Home for Christ YouTube and you can catch us up, catch up with us, my God, as we finish, my God, moving on to part two of Don't Take the Bait. And I was in prayer. I started praying at 530 today here on the altar. And God began to bring back bait. Think about bait. He usually used bait to trap something. You know, we've been having some critters and stuff tending to walk around and move around our front porch, my God. And we got that light, I mean, that camera where you can see. And so my wife been sending me stuff. We've been having a little stuff walking around. So she went out to Lowe's and got some mothballs and all this other stuff. She's just trying to scare stuff away. Come on, somebody. Uh, uh, but I want you to think about this word because it's one of utter importance. Let me help you understand something. I really, really want to empower you and encourage you tonight. But I want you to understand that when you think about bait, it's a trap. We so used to hearing that word, I even somewhat dealing with bait in the, in, the, in the Western culture, my God, where it don't have any significance. But in relation to what Christ is saying, 
It has great significance. This bait, my God, has the power to destroy your life. It has the power to hinder your assignment. It has the power to rob you of external, internal joy and external peace, my God. This, this thing called bait, my God, is real serious, my God. And that bait, of course, we know what it is. It's offenses. Oh, my God. So, my God, you and I got to be careful about the bait that the enemy will use. As I told the new members, my God, all 26 of them that joined this past Sunday, let's give God a hand for them. I share with them that they're going to have an opportunity to be offended. I told them that somebody going to say something that might not be true. My God, uh, you might not like something, my God, they're saying or going on. My God, but understand that you have an obligation to communicate. We talk about communication on the front end keeps all the chaos and so forth down on the back end. And so when you misunderstand or when you want to, when you have something going on, as I told the new members, please communicate. Don't sit there, my God, and begin to perceive something that may not be true. And don't always listen to people that's talking about this and this and that because they might not know anyway. You know how many people are sitting in churches around the nation, my God, that's sitting with offenses, my God, and they think that it's true and it ain't even true. And the person they offended it sit two rows behind them and they won't even say nothing to them. Yeah. That's real. Bait. Bait. The enemy has a way of dangling. Bait. He don't care who he use, what he use, how he use it, and when he use it. But we, my God, God, and see, this is the thing, my God, thank you, Holy Ghost. He, God warns us through his word not to take the bait. He, he tells us somebody, my God, uh, sins against you, forgive them. He letting you know off the top, my God, my God, that problems are going to come. People are going to make mistakes. Situation is going to happen. But he tells you, my God, don't take the bait. Get it up off of you real quick. But yet, if we, we know that, and yet we still choose to eat the bait. Not take it, eat the bait, my God. Even after the word of God warns us. The Bible says God always give warning. Come on, empower me, Holy Ghost. The Bible says God always give warning before destruction. All of us, my God, in our hearing, way before I said it, but some of us, my God, heard this, what I'm preaching about, my God, many, many years ago, but we have yet to accept what Christ has said. Because we have not got the revelation how dangerous this one word called offense, I've been offended is, to everything that we're doing in the natural. This one word, being offended and taking on the fence, will stop all momentum, will stop all progress, will rob you of joy, will rob you of peace, uh, of peace. It destroys marriages, all of those type of stuff. My God, it interferes with relationship between mama and daughter, father and son. This is a bad, bad boy. That's why Christ said, my God, they shall come, but forgives seven times 70 for one offense. You're going to have an opportunity to make a decision tonight, and that's going to be on you. Look at that. Thank you for that, Mahog. That's beautiful. Look at the human being and look at what's around it. A snake. Because like I taught you, a python bites you and then it, it swirls around you to squeeze the life out of you. My God, some of us, my God, we have external movement, my God, but we're really not alive because we're being sucked to death by the spirit of offense. One of the most, de one of the most deceptive and insidious Kinds of bait is something every Christian has encountered, which is an offense, as I told you last week. But I began to look up the word insidious. It means proceeding in a gradual, subtle way. Okay? With, 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 watch this. With harmful effects. Proceeding gradually. We're talking about bait. An insidious, my God, offense. It starts out, my God, slow, but then it gradually makes its way. It gradually, my God, moves its way through your temple, moves, your, moves its way through your mind. Come on, somebody. And it's, it's, it's number one goal, my God, is, is to bring harmful effects. E, my God, you can't play with this thing. Yeah. You can't play with it. Come on, somebody. Mm. An, offense, an offense itself is not deadly if it stays in the trap. If we do what the scripture says, say, forgive 70 times 70. Quickly forgive. That's how you keep it in a trap. Quickly forgive. Come on, somebody. Okay? It says, but if we pick up, pick it up. This means I looked up the word pick up. I want to show you this right quick, my God. Because we talked about, my God, in cities, it means proceeding in a gradual, subtle way. So, my God, if I pick it up, which means to take hold, 
to choose, my God, to, to take hold, to choose someone or something. I have to make a choice to take the bait. I have to make the choice to pick up, my God, uh, 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 the offense. Are you with me so far? Mm -hmm. And then after you pick it up, then you begin to consume it. Consume means to eat. Drink. Drinking poison, Christians. Eating poison, Christians. Or we begin to ingest. So after we pick it up, we begin to consume. We begin to drink, eat, and ingest. And then we begin the third thing. Remember, I'm talking about gradual, proceeding in gradual, shut away. We pick it up, we consume it, and then we do the third thing. We feed on it. Remember, what, as I taught y'all, what you feed will live and what you don't feed will die. And so when a person has, a, has offended you, a person has done something to you, you have, a, you have a decision right then to make. The Bible says, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. If you choose to be offended, then you have just chose death over life. Not only if my God can see, let me, let me, let me, let me, let, let me, let me move. With. Some of us have already been offended. Some of us have already ate, drunk, debate, my God. But you, what you going to do with it after this word? Because you still got to make a choice to release. You still got to make a choice to let go, my God. We can't say we want the glory. We can't say, God, you're a miracle worker, but then yet we don't do what the scriptures admonish us to do. So what you do, you hinder God from doing what he want to do. God, all of us is a candidate for miracles. All of us is candidates, my God, for the super abundant life, my God. But you and I behind our choices, behind this one word called offense, my God, will hinder what God can do in your life. Oh, my God. We pick it up. We consume it. And then we begin to feed it. Gradual process. With the ultimate goal of this one word is harmful effects. Harmful effects. And many people has disconnected from God behind an offense that we picked up, that we consumed, and that we constantly feed. And not only that, though, watch this. The devil will bring people that's close to you to help you feed it. See what I'm trying to say? You think she or he is helping you, but really they're hindering you. My God, they're making it stronger and stronger and stronger because they're steady talking about the thing that you should have been in pushed to the side, yeah. that you should have been in forgave somebody from, and they're steady talking about it, my God, because that's your boo, or that's your homeboy, my God, but the enemy is using your boo, or the enemy is using your homeboy, my God, to continue to feed something that's ultimately killing you. Uh -huh. Am I helping you so far? Yeah. Okay, let's give God a hand right quick. Mm. So remember what you feed will live. What do it live at though? See, y'all was hear me say what you feed will live, it lives right here. Everybody point right here. In your mind. You pick it up in your mind, you consume it in your mind, and you feed it in your mind. And guess where it lives at? In your mind. Even though this snake is external, my God, but this offense is internal right here. The Bible says clean up first the inside of the cup and then the outside shall be clean. See, this right here, this work, my God, in the New Testament is an inside work. Old Testament, God work external. In, New Testament, God work internal. Come on, somebody. And so, my God, we feed it in our mind. We feed this in our mind. Let's go a little deeper. Oh, my God. So, we got to be careful. Mm. My God, if we have become offended, and if we are already offended, which as some of us is, my God, if not all of us about something, my God, we have to make a decision. Are we going to continue to choose death when the word of God says, I set before you a choice? And then he tells you, God is so good. He says, I set before you, baby, life, death, blessing, curses. You determine which one you choose. God gave every human being the power to choose. And then he tells you to choose life. That's a good God. So, 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 can I help us? Oh, Lord. Can I help us? So we, we worship and we in church, we doing our thing. I'm talking here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. My God. And we coming down and we doing all that we doing. I'm talking about we grooving in the spirit. My God, but we won't forgive. Yeah. We won't release. And so I wonder what heaven is saying. When he look at me, not willing to do what the scripture just said. The Bible says, heart not your heart. That means your mind towards the word of God when you hear the word of God. All of us just heard the same word. Yeah. Forgive seven times seven. Yes. A day. Not next week, not next encounter. A day. 
See what I'm trying to say? So you have heard that. My God, now you are bound by the word. God cannot hold you I, I, accountable to nothing that we don't know. Amen. None of us can say that we don't know because I'm taking my time and flowing. You and I have a choice to make today. My God, you determine if you're going to get a miracle. You determine if you're going to walk in a blessed life. You determine if, my God, if you're going to soar. You make the decision, not God. By every choice that you choose to make, I choose not to make. It's powerful, man. It's a bad boy right here. Look at your neighbor and say, don't take the bait. But look at that hook right there. Look at that hook right there. Thank you, Mahogany. Good. I like the creativity, woman of God. Look at the hook. That's what it is. He's trying to hook you. See, because let me tell you. Oh, I can't even get going. Let me tell, let me tell you. Wait to flow, man of God. My, because, see, the enemy know that God bought you here. And he know the church as a whole, according to the vision, has the power to feed you and help you. And so the enemy is going to do everything he can because he's strategic. Can I help you understand some enemies about his business? Yeah. Yeah. He, he doing what he was created to do. Yeah. So I ain't mad at him because he's doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah. The problem is we not doing what we're supposed to do. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? So, so the enemy already know, my God, he don't care what he uses and who he uses. But his ultimate goal is you rolling, you excited about the church, you excited about pastor, you excited about first lady, you excited about your new walk and all that. And as soon as the enemy say, I got to get them, they're getting too much momentum. She's getting too excited. She's throwing, she signed up for class, my God. They rolling, my God. So, my God, I got I to gotta put something, I got to put a hook in the way. I got to get in the way. I got to get in the way. I got to get in the way because I got to stop momentum, my God. I got to stop the progress. I got to dumb them down. I got to make them feel angry. I got to make them begin to sit, sit in the back instead of sitting in the front no more. I got to, mm. So, the enemy is looking for a hook, my God, to stop momentum in your life. Are you with me so far? Because he see, my God, the potential, my God, of your life. He see you excited. He see you on fire. He see things in place at this church to help you develop and become the disciples that God called you. And he's scared and terrified of your assignment. He's scared and terrified of your momentum. Because don't you know when you walk in purpose, my God, you become a major threat to the enemy. And the enemy don't want you to discover who you are. The enemy don't want you to walk in your assignment. So he want to get you bitter instead of better. He want to get you offended, my God, so you can begin to set down, God. So you don't come in the house and worship God. So you can come in there angry and bitter, my God, which disqualifies find you from getting a real blessing my God because God won't go against your will so you disqualify yourself when you come in the house of the Lord bitter or you choose to walk out the house of the Lord still bitter you disqualify yourself from God moving in your life and so the enemy looks for hooks hooks another word for hooks is bait my God to disconnect you in any kind of way that he can he don't care what he use that applies for marriages as well that applies between husband and wife Mama and daughter, father and son, co-worker and supervisor, whatever he can do. It might not even happen in church. Some of y'all might God got some offenses that the church going over Christ didn't cause. Some other church caused it, but we got to be the one to deal with the hell that you bring to the church. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. We didn't cause it. But I tell you what, my God, we got a vision in place to help you get fixed if you want to get fixed. Because if you could have been fixed, you'd have been fixed a long time ago if it was just preaching. That's why you got to allow God to do surgery. That's why you got to allow God to go up into your mind and renovate your mind. And by God, uproot that hook, uproot that bait in your mind and put something in there, my God, other than offense. Look at your name and say, don't take the bait. So I'm going to jump, my God. Point number one was betrayal. Usually, my God, when a person is offended, my God, they start betraying one another. The Bible says, how can two people walk together except there be agreement? When there's agreement between husband and wife, there's agreement between pastor and sheep. When there's agreement between friends, my God, everything is moving forward. But as soon as an offense, as soon as something happens, we begin to back up on each other. Yeah. Now the unity has been interrupted. Now the agreement, my God, has been severed, my God, because somebody is offended. Somebody that got out of rhythm. Somebody that stepped out of bounds, my God. And so now the power that we have, because when two people walk together, there's power. One could put a thousand in flight. Two could put ten thousand in flight. And so, my God, when there's division, you become powerless, my God. But when you stay connected, you got power, my God, to resist. That's why the Bible says when one fall in the ditch, if he fall alone, pity the man that fall alone. But if he fall, he got somebody with him. He got somebody to help him up out of there. The enemy is after your relationship, church, because relationship is the currency in the kingdom. God uses you and I, my God, to move his kingdom alone. So if you can get the Christians offended at one another, you never see a demon fighting another demon. You only see Christians fighting Christians. Come on, somebody. Y'all missed that. You never see another demon fighting another demon because demons are in unity. 
So if the enemy, my God, could get, my God, the Christians that's supposed to be walking together in power and unity divided, a house divided cannot. We become powerless. We can do more together. That's what it's called, unity. And the enemy is terrified of unity. Write down Psalms 133. Well, there was unity at, my God. God gave a commanded blessing. Mm. That's not just in the church. That's in our relationships. And so, my God, when a person has been defended, they start betraying one another. You start disrespecting one another. You start not being concerned, my God, about the person. You start being more concerned about you. Guilty. See, I got to be free so you can get free. I got to be transparent to help you get transparent. See what I'm trying to say? And so, my God, when there has been a fence, my God, you start looking to protect you and it's all, it become all about you. Also, my God, you can become very self-focused, self-centered. You can become an idol to your own self because you make your life all about you. Because you know what you are in, you know what we are in, protect mode. I'm going to protect me at all costs, even if it means hurting you. The offense is a bad boy. Look at his name and say, don't take the bait. And so, my God, after my God betrayal has started, then here's another thing we do. Point two, put that on the screen. We move to putting up them walls. Putting up them walls. Can I help you understand some God can't penetrate your wall? We know that he could if he wanted to, but he's not because he's not going to go against your will. He's not going to go against your will. Can I tell you and remind you that you determine to what degree that you're going to be blessed in God's kingdom? By the submission of your heart and the commitment of your loyalty. You, I, you determine to what degree you and I are going to be blessed by God. By the submission of our heart and our loyalty. God says he shows himself to those who are. So you and I, my God, when you have accepted the bait, you move into the point one, which was betrayal, and then from that you walk, you start, remember it's gradual, it's progressive to putting up walls. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars, according to Proverbs 18.9. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Get the image. Each, each one of us is friends. But the scriptures, my God, admonish us to think about a fortified city. Look at a little city like Owasso or Sand Springs, and it has a, a wall around it. It's more easier to penetrate that wall than it is for friends to be restored when they're offended. Whew. This is a bad boy. Are you with me so far? Being offended has imprisoned countless Christians and severed many relationships. Can I hold, can I help you? If you and I, I and you are holding on to any form of offense, even though we have external movement, even though we got a car, some clothes and food, a little cheese in the bank, we kind of wear some designer clothes and all that stuff, you know, uh, we captive. Because we're not maximizing our fullest potential. There's no way that you and I can maximize your fullest potential, your fullest joy. Joy is internal. No matter what's going on, my God, you got joy. It could be all hellish, my God, external, but you still got joy internal. Peace, my God, has to do with circumstances and situations. Everything is lined up, then you have peace. But see, you want that joy. So, my God, if you don't have that lasting joy, you're in some form of captivity. If you find yourself, my God, every time the enemy attack, my God, you, your faith is shattered. You're not walking and living in, victor in victory. You're not living a victorious life. My God, are you with me so far? This is heavy, my God. And so you got to understand, my God, you're, you're, you're in a form of captivity. You're captive. Oh, you're captive to the hook and you're captive to the bait of the word offense. It's a hook. It's a bait. And the enemy's ultimate goal is to get you and I captive. The Bible says, my God, whom the son set free, we quote it, it's free indeed. Then we quote that, but we still captive, captive to offense. It's a contradictory. <laughs> okay, we talking. We talking. It's flowing just the way it needs to flow. And so we are in prison. Ah, can you imagine? Uh, I can understand being locked up in prison, physical prison, like I was, and some of us, my God. But now we're free, and we still feel like we're in prison. 
We in the free world to make choices, to enjoy the benefits of our labor. My God, we can come and go as we want to. We ain't got to be told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. But my God, we can't even move. When we get around a person that we got into a fence, the first thing we do is go the other way. Captivity. Uh, well, uh, if she or he sit, on the, sit beside me, my God, I, I'm going to get up and leave and go sit on somewhere else. I'm captive. I can't flow. I don't have a good flow. When I see this person, uh, something remind me of this situation, my God, I'm captive to it. I'm physically free in the world, but I'm bound up to one word called offense that I won't release and let go. You don't understand, Pastor. I may not understand, but God does. And so what you and I tell God, my God, is that the power and the blood that was shed over 2,000 years ago is not strong enough to liberate me from this offense. And some of us, my God, think you Holy Ghost is angry and frustrated at God. And you don't realize it, but you are. That's why it's hard for you to read. That's why it's hard for you to worship. That's why you don't have no excitement about your relationship with God because you're somewhat upset with him because you said, God, why did you allow this to happen? You associate the fence with God. That's just what the enemy wants you to do. It's a hook. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody look at your name and say, lifestyle still matters. And he started, truth be told, hooking you and I when we was a child. I'm going into a series, my God. I ain't never preached on rejection, but I'm starting to read, my God, because I'm starting to understand there's a lot of people in my church, my God, that God has blessed me and my wife with that's dealing with the root of rejection. And they get offended about everything and anything, my God, because they're not healed. Oh, the great Robert Moore said, you got many people. Let me quote him again. The great Robert Moore said, you got many people that say, but their soul is still wounded and not healed. Many of us in here, we are Christians, but we are still wounded. Yeah. We need some healing. That's why you got to continue to press. That's why you got to continue to push. That's why you can't take the bait. That's why you can't take the hook. That's why you got to separate yourself from anything and anybody, my God, that's going to make you feel like you're in prison. We saved, my God, and we saved out there looking on land, but our soul is still need to be set free and delivered. That's why the word of God says, work out your soul salvation. We're offended in our emotions. We're offended in our wills. We're offended in our mind. That's what the enemy attacked. He attacked your soul. When you get saved, your spirit come alive, but your soul got to be reborn. Your soul got to be transformed. Many of us is captive to our soul. That's why we can't push. That's why, my God, everything seems so hard. Because our soul is still wounded. And if I don't speak to you, if I don't see you, you're offended. If I don't acknowledge you, you're offended. If I walk up to champ and don't speak to my God, speak to champ and don't speak to Sarah, example, she offended. Example, that's because you got you dealing with the root of rejection that I didn't cause. But I got to be the one to carry it. But I'm strong enough, my God, to help you deal with your root system, baby. Because over here, we producing quality over quantity. Somebody give God a hand, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm not the one did it. So as I told my leaders, don't take it personal. Because some of y'all leaders, Francetta, Pastor Madeline, you know, uh, uh, Pastor Michelle, and Janice, y'all remind some of these wounded sheep, I'm going to keep it on the dollar, of their controlling mamas. And so when you try to lead them, my God, they get offended. because you were, It ain't against you and I, it's against the spirit, my God, that has wounded them because they wounded in their soul. I'm growing and learning this thing. This is major warfare. When you start digging up, my God, stuff that's been buried for many, many years. Oh, it's hard to sit up under here, my God, my God. That's why they shipwreck. My season is up. Now, flesh made you leave. Ain't no God told you nothing. God don't, God don't. Who think you ain't about speak it up? Watch this, watch this. Because God would never tell you to shift, shift off of a fence. That's contamination. God know if you don't get that deal with her at 205, you taking it somewhere else, and that ain't God. So don't try to justify my God shifting. That was flesh that made you shift. That was God. God don't move you off of flesh. God don't move you off of a fist. Can't dumb my God down like that. My God don't operate with flesh. Many people have shifted. Some of y'all have shifted and came over out of flesh. Flesh moves you. God don't move you out of flesh. My season is up. The devil is alive. Flesh moved you. Come on, give God a hand. Is this helping anybody? I said, is this helping anybody? 
Okay? Amen. Being offended has imprisoned countless, countless, countless of Christians and severed relationships. Uh, because uh, Satan didn't like the way God ran the kingdom. So he got full of himself. Just think he was second in command to God. Think about this, church. Satan was second in command. Was nobody more powerful and had more authority than Satan, than God, but God. And that wasn't good enough. And he was in heaven where we desire to be one day. But he got full of himself. See, pride also make you sever relationships. So now, because he rose up against God, God kicked him up out of heaven. Because he can't have two kings in heaven. When you have a throne, there can only be one king on the throne. That's a whole other message right there. See, my God, you, you, can't, you can't be on the throne and God on the throne too. One of y'all got to go. And guess what? You can't beat God. You can't have two kings occupying the same throne. And so God, my God, is so secure, he'll step out the way and sidestep and let you run your own life. Read the book of Romans. He'll hand you over to a reprobate mind. Think about the stuff, my God, you and I have gathered into and been into. And come on, the pain and the scars and stuff. Because we wanted to be king. King is supreme. King is ruler. We're trying to rule our life. My God, you rule your life by way of God's spirit. Not by your flesh. Not by your choices. Not that I'm grown. I can do what I want to do. God know my heart. I don't have to submit to nobody. That's not the kingdom. That's flesh. And so when you got two kings on the throne, somebody got to go. And God said, you know what? I'm just going to allow my God, raid him, my God, to have his way for a season. I get him in the third, so I'm going to get out the way. Who, my God, when a man left to himself is doomed for the? Doomed for destruction. Mm, Lord, help me move. The closer the relationship, the more severe the offense. The closer. The closer. That's why he says, how can two walk together except there be agreement? Uh, I told y'all last week, my God, David said, man, if it had been somebody else, it would have been so painful. This was my closest companion that has rose up against me and hurt him. It cut him. Some of the coldest offenses and pain we got right now is people that has offended us. People that has, 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 has violated us. And it's hard. Yes, it's hard. By way of the flesh. You got to put that stuff on the cross by way of the spirit. And every time it rises up, you got to cast it down. You in a major warfare because the enemy know, my God, this bait, this hook, my God, he's winning. So every time a thought come up about that situation or that person or whatever it is, you got to cast it down. The Bible says take every thought into captivity. You got to take every negative thought that goes against the word of God. You take it into captivity, my God. You put it in prison. Every thought that's causing you pain, every thought that's causing you hurt, every thought that goes against the Constitution, you take it and put it in prison and you cast it out. That's why it's called war. You, the enemy's out there. This right here. Somebody do like this. This is what the enemy out there. Guess where a lot of our offenses is? Right here. Because this consists of the mind, the will, and the emotions. Yeah. Yeah. This is the soul. Save, but my soul is wounded. My soul is hurt. My soul is offended. Where your soul at? My God. Mind, will, and emotion. A lot of us is hurt in our emotions. We can't push forward. Right. Every time somebody do one thing, my God, you back in prison. Yeah. <laughs> it's Bible. Bible. Somebody give God a hand. So remember, the closer the relationship, oh my God, the more severe the offense, you find the greatest hatred among people you were once close to. I got to constantly keep people on the altar. That's why I said, I told Pastor Dean when I got it, I said, man, I'm going to put my stuff down. I'm going to pray. Not because I got something in my heart against somebody, but I'm just going to pray. Prayer. Keeps offenses buried. Amen. Flipping them pages. Spending time in God's presence keeps offense buried. Talking to people that's offended, so you got two hurt people and two offended people. What is that going to do? You're feeding it. Yeah. Come on. Right. You know what she did to me? Boy, you know what he did to me? You know what he said? Captive. Full of tongues, but captive. Even got prophecy, but still captive. Because the enemy know anytime he raised that bait, he got you. No matter how much progress you make, he yanked this mama down, he pulling you right back. All you got to do is do this right here. And can I help you with something? Let me help you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Everybody look at your pastor. When God is trying to liberate you, that means help you get free from something. He bring people into your life that has the power, meaning authority, to help you get free. Don't get offended at the people that God brought into your life to help you get free. Because you said, God, I want to be free. 
You said, God, help me overcome this. You said, God, I'm tired of being bitter. I'm tired of being angry. So God got to send somebody that walks in authority, his authority, not flesh authority, his authority. My God, that has the power to help you get free. Why you get offended at the people that you ask God to bring into your life to help you? One of them is standing right here. I'm just, I'm just transparent. I got to be naked so you can get free. So again, let me help you understand that as I move, my God, when you pray and say, God, help me, God said, okay, I got to use people. Who, how do you think God advanced his kingdom? Through people. God uses you and I to advance his kingdom. See what I say? So when you cry out and say, God, help me, God, fix me, God, heal me, God uses people. And so, my God, when God brings that person that has the authority in the spirit, my God, is, see, you can't help nobody if you're not in submission to authority. See, a lot of y'all talking to people who ain't submitted. You got to be submitted to God first, and then you got to have some type of physical covering in your life. You don't have, see, 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 you operate outside of authority. Authority can, biblical authority, I'm going way up here now. Biblical authority can only be, oh my God, biblical authority can only be given and designated by God. Man can't give you biblical authority at that level. That comes from God. Only thing that I can do is empower you to do what God has given you when you properly lined up with God. And so God will bring somebody, my God, that has the authority, vertical and horizontal, my God, to help you get free. But when they say something to you, you get offended at them. So now you just cut yourself off of the person that God was going to use to help you get free. And now you stand week after week in captivity. Let me tell you what I mean by it. Let me bring some substance to that. Because you can't help nobody get free from something that you ain't never walked through. So if she or he have walked through it, then they qualified to help you walk through it. If I've never been through that, all I can do is give you some encouragement. All I can do is give you some, 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 uh, some education, or some information, or some knowledge. But if I have been through it, I can give you life application. You want to walk with somebody, my God, that has went through the same thing you're trying to come out of because they have the power and authority. That's my God, my God. They have the authority because of what they've been through to help you walk out of what you're in. Why would I want to talk to somebody that ain't never been strung out on nothing? Like, you, can't, you don't understand me. Give me all that knowledge, all them 12 steps. Give me some life application. Oh, my God, because I've been through it, so I'm qualified to help you come out. They're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their... You want to be around somebody that got the same testimony you got. <laughs> Is this helping anybody so far? Let's go a little deeper. You find your greatest hatred, as I said, to people that you once called. You begin to construct walls. Let me move. I want to finish there. You begin to construct walls. Watch this. As I looked at the word construct, because I want to make sure, my God, which is I knew it, but I just needed it for confirmation, which means to build or erect. We got walls built. I'm 5'4", but my wall is just 8 feet tall. You six feet, but your walls is 12 feet tall. You 4'11", and your walls is seven feet tall. You have constructed, you have erected walls. You have constructed and erected walls that's supposed to keep the enemy out, but it's keeping you in. Because guess what? The Bible says God stands at the door and He is standing there like he's doing right now, and he's knocking. Right here, he's knocking. Your wall is right here. He can't penetrate. So if God, the Spirit, cannot penetrate, welcome to a miserable life. Do like this. Come on, woman of God, do like this. Yeah, I'm trying to help you get free. Are you listening to me, woman of God? That's right. Follow the pastor. Right here, y'all. That's where the wall is at. And if the Spirit of God cannot penetrate it, how do you expect to be free? We keeping God out. Move me out the way. We keeping God out. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. This is God in word form. The Gospel of John, starting in chapter 1. If this cannot penetrate your wall, your mind, guess what? You have no way to be free. Whom the Son 
This is God in word form. The Son is right here in the Word. Set free is free indeed. So if this can't penetrate you, uh, 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 Sherrod, then you can't get free. You know how many people around the country is sitting in churches and this God cannot penetrate your mental wall? So you stay captive, even though we have external expression. How do you know you're captive? Every time something happens, there you go back into a cave. The slightest thing send you to the cave. You're wounded, and you're still captive. Though we have all the expression, though we're quoting all the scriptures. So we have erected walls. When we are hurt, when we are hurt, my God, who, oh my God, we begin to safeguard our hearts to prevent any future wounds. We become selective, denying entry to all that would hurt us. Some of y'all has been so wounded and scarred from childhood to present. My passion, somewhat of my aggression, my boldness that the Spirit of God comes upon me when I preach, it terrifies you. You're scared to really come close because you think I'm going to hurt you. You think she's going to hurt you. You think they're going to hurt you. That's a wound and that's a wall that I have to fight through, my God, just to help you because you associate me with something that happened that I didn't cause. And so you got walls up to keep me out, even though I'm your pastor. I preach to you, but I'm really not your pastor because you can't pastor nobody that follow you from a distance. And so because you're so wounded and so hurt, you give me what you want to give me. Where I'm going, you're selective about what we can do and what we can't do in your life. I'll let you if I want to. I refuse to sit up on another abusive past. I ain't abuse you. I'm going to preach the truth. We say the truth sets you free. Don't get mad at me. Get mad at the truth. And then accept it so you can be free. Because I preach the truth. It's amazing, it's amazing. Thank you, Lord. It's amazing how we cry out and say, God, send me somebody that's real. Send me some people that's real. I'm tired of sitting up on the hypocrites. I'm tired of following people that's, that preach one thing and live something else. And God bless you with something, and you don't even know what to do with it. You're intimidating the skin of the very thing you ask God to give you. Because you're wounded. I'm not trying to put you down. I'm trying to make you see. You're selective about your level of commitment and loyalty. You won't let your walls down so somebody can really help you get free from all the bondage and chaos that's going on in your walls, behind your walls. This is the garden. Adam and Eve was in the garden, in the natural. Your garden now is your head, your mind. If it's thorns and thistles and weeds in your mind, that's your garden. You got to pluck up those thorns and whistle and uh, thistles and stuff. The garden. He placed Adam and Eve in the garden. Physical garden. Take her to the garden. Take her to the garden. Well, your garden is right here. See what I'm trying to say? So you and I are very selective about the level of, control, of, of interest that we give somebody because we got walls up because we, we, we have vowed nobody would ever treat me like that again. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. See, I'm way out there now. And then we start operating in the spirit of Jezebel. Me and my wife have been talking about Jezebel. It's not just sexual immorality, baby. Some of us has come, my God, up under abusive fathers, and my God, and our fathers was very abusive, and a lot of us has come up under a lot of controlling mamas, and so we got the spirit of control. On my way out the door coming to church, I was watching uh, this lady uh, on Steve, uh, the, the show out to Steve that Keith liked to watch, and she got a very, she, she, she was invited to come over and help her friend, my God, pick out the paint. Because she got such a controlling spirit where this was the day where she ended up painting her whole friend's house. I mean, living room because she didn't want her friend to mess up her own house. And so the lady that was interviewed said, you can come paint my house if you want to. Watch this. Watch this. Don't miss it. The woman has such a controlling Jezebel spirit where she, her friend invited her over to show her the paint, my God. And, and, and the woman of God ended up painting the whole living room because she didn't want the woman of God, her friend, to mess up the paint. So she painted it for her. Because they were dealing with control. That's a Jezebel spirit. Manipulation. Jezebel. Some of you ladies got to be very careful. And guess where it starts from? Rejection. So you feel like, my God, I'll never give another man, another woman that much authority in my life. Now that I'm up, now I can make my own decisions. Nobody ever control my life. Not even the pastor, not even God. 
And the pastor is not supposed to control your life. The pastor is supposed to stir you. See, I'm trying to show y'all how we save, but we're not, our soul is not healthy. And so it's hard to pastor people who won't let, my God, the Spirit of God penetrate to help them get free from offenses. Me and this woman of God on this front row got to walk through all this stuff that we never caused. And some of the stuff that you are offended for right now, and some of the stuff you got against the leaders in this church right now, they didn't cause it. They just remind you of somebody, my God, that did some of you because you're not healthy. And so you're looking for an excuse to get offended about something to justify staying captive. It's hard to submit. Some of them got mama problems. And so when somebody reminds you of your mama, my God, and they walk in a level of authority, which you think is controlled, but it's spiritual authority, my God, you instantly put up walls. You instantly start backing up because you, she can't control me. She mad me and my mama. She said, no, it ain't this authority. Don't get control, my God, mixed up with spiritual authority. Mm. TDJ, come on, put me on your stage. I got something for him. <laughs> yes, sir. We withhold access. We withhold access until these people have paid their debts. That's a form of captivity. You are telling yourself, I would not let nobody in until they have paid their debt to me. That person, that situation, and so therefore it may be 20 years and you still holding your walls, and that person, some, mm, thank you, Holy Ghost, let me be careful. Some people has gone to be the Lord, and you still got them in captivity. Release. Release. That's a hook. I'm not denying what happened, but you got to release. We open our lives up only when you, when, when, when you got walls up. You open your lives only up. You, you, we open our lives only to those we feel that are on our side. That's why they say, People, my God, they say, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. So people that's wounded, they tend to attract people that's wounded. Like-minded spirits attract and navigate. Anytime a person join a church, new members, listen to me, new members, anytime a person join a church, if they still dealing with a lot of soul ties and wounds and scars and rejection and all that stuff, that spirit's going to find somebody in the church that's dealing with that. And they'll befriend one another. Like-minded spirits hang out with each other. That's why God told Moses, don't, no, don't take it personal. They upset with me, not you. Yeah. Your pastor reminded a lot of these people of something I didn't cause. Because right. they confuse and control with a spiritual authority. Let's give God a hand. The Spirit of God is moving. Thank you, Lord. An offended Christian is one who takes life in and because of fear cannot release life. but don't have the power to release life. We can take life in, but we can't release out because the bait and the hook won't let you release. The fence that's barricaded around the wall, behind the wall, won't let you release. If you don't release, you can't enjoy. If you don't release, you can't breathe. Oxygen in, oxygen out. You're not breathing. That means you're not living. You're captive to a fence. The New Testament describes these walls as strongholds. Stronghold is a place that has been fortified to protect against an attack. It is a place where a cause or a belief is strongly defended and upheld. <clears throat> our response to offenses determines our future. Write that down. Our response. Jesus tells us in Luke that they're going to come. 
But what you gonna do with it when they come? How you gonna handle it? A stronghold, again, is a place that has been fortified to protect against an attack. It is a place where, where a cause or belief is strongly defended. Can I help you understand something? Some of us are defending causes that's not biblical. We're standing and we got our earned belief system about something that's inaccurate. And anytime somebody, matter of fact, me and the baby was talking about this today, anytime somebody comes to challenge a belief system that you have been hiding behind or you have allowed to become a stronghold, anytime somebody show any resemblance or anytime a word or somebody say something, attack their belief system or, or, or comes up against their belief system, you instantly get angry. You, get, you start rebelling. You start backing up. You look, look what I'm doing, y'all. You, 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 you're in attack mode. Because you have formulated a stronghold, my God, and you have made this, this is what it is. Can't nobody tell me nothing different. It is what it is. I'm going to keep it on a dollar. So anytime somebody say something, anytime I remind you of something, anytime the Spirit of God say something, anytime one of the leaders say something, my God, you instantly like this. Can't nobody penetrate, my God, and give you, my God, ooh, my God, revelation because your belief is so, mm. You got your mindset that this is the way it is. This is what it's truth, and it ain't truth. So when God is bringing revelation, you can't receive it because you got your mindset that what I'm saying and what I'm believing is already truth. So what you saying and what the Bible saying, it don't matter. I have made my own belief. I got my own truth. So regardless of what God said, I know what the Bible says, Pastor people. You don't have to tell me, but it is what it is. This is what it is. That's anger. That's real. Stronghold. That's why I say we captive. Let me push through. Let me push through. Second Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says we can use, we, we use God's mighty weapons. God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons. It ain't knives and guns. To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud. Listen to this, church. God is telling, I'm telling you and God is telling you through the word. I'm just reading what the word is telling you to do. This is how you overcome offenses. This is how you knock down stuff. This is how you deal with this fleshly stuff that we're dealing with. He says we use God's weapons. That's thus says the Lord. Either it's God or it ain't God. Either there ain't no in between. God say do or God say don't do. This is a weapon. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the stronghold. Worldly weapons, as I told you, go get a gun. Go get a knife. You don't take render evil for evil. You know, the Bible tells you, you don't render evil evil. The Bible says love thy neighbor as thyself. My God, my God, my God. The Bible says, my God, uh, 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 forgiveness covers a multitude of sins. Love covers a multitude of sins. You know how you knock down the enemy? Love. You know how you cast down strongholds and knock down stronghold love. And when you love somebody that's wrong you, the Bible says you heap hot coals on their head. That's, that's stuff burning on top of the head. They, mm, come on, somebody. That's Bible. That's a weapon. Love is a weapon. To torment the devil. Not to withhold from somebody else. You are bound by God's word to give somebody love. You don't withhold love for somebody because you're offended at them. That's Jezebel. Yeah. Yeah. I can tell y'all this. I'm, I'm, I, I, my baby's sitting right on the front row. And I'd have made a lot of mistakes. Nothing sexual sin or none of that stuff. My wife ain't never would tell her love for me. She ain't never stopped being a wife. She ain't never kept it on the dollar. All the way around as a woman, no matter what I have done, that's love. That's not Jezebel. Pastor D recognized that early on. She said, no matter what you and Pastor go through, she always shows up as a wife. She always supports you. She always loving you. She always cooking for you. She always handling you. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk. She ain't never would tell some of y'all would eat, land up with them, your husband, and you would hold stuff from her. I ain't just talking about sex. That was for somebody. I said it was a pastor because, see, that's Jezebel. Manipulation and control. Thank you, baby. And I ain't in the dollhouse. I am the priest, prophet, the king of my home. I bet you that. Let me get y'all on out of here. We filter everything through past hurts. Is this helping anybody? 
We filter, we filter, we filter everything through past hurts, rejections, and experiences. We find it impossible even to believe God because we filter. The Bible says to the pure, they see things as pure. To the defiled, they see things as defiled. I was sharing it with First Lady this morning, Sister Sharon, on the way to work. To the defiled, internally defiled, strongholds, hurts, rejections, pains. See what I'm trying to say? All that stuff defiles you, and so you interpret life, and you filter life through your pain, even though you got tongues, even though you have a form of godliness. But, my God, when that person come around, you have no power to love. See, that's why the Bible says, my God, you know, have a form of God with no power. So if somebody's offending me, when I see them, can I still love them? Can I still embrace them? Can I still have some communion, fellowship with them? Or when I see them, I push. Or when I see them, I get my attitude. That's because you got tongues and you got scriptures, but you ain't got no power. Power empowers you to do what your flesh cannot do. You can't love nobody through your flesh, but you can love them through the spirit. That's what the scripture means by having a form of godliness, but no power. You'll know if you got power when it's time to forgive somebody that you know wronged you. Somebody mishandled you. Understand that people are going to make mistakes. But do you got the power to see past their mistakes? And understand that once upon a time, as, as the woman of God, Krista, said in leadership meeting last night, on um, Monday, we, uh, remember where we was when we first came to God. Remember how messed up we was. And some of us, all of us are still messed up. A mess on our way to? We cannot believe God. I want to give you this as I close. We cannot believe God. God mean, we cannot believe that God means what he says, y'all. This is going to liberate a lot of them. You cannot help people up under you get free if you're not free. Quit talking to people about stuff that you still ain't walked out of. That's why you see certain people, certain leaders, and certain stuff, they can only go so far. They can only deal with certain things. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't be telling people this and that and you ain't that. Don't do that. That was God. Y'all see how he stopped me. Okay? Okay? We cannot believe, my God, we cannot believe God means what he says. We doubt his goodness and faithfulness to us. Watch this. The spirit of, I'm going to pick you up. You're going to like this. The spirit of rejection slash offense keeps us from being able to see and accept the perfect love of God that he has for us. The spirit of rejection and offense keeps us from being able to see. That ain't just physical see. To a feel, my God, uh, the, and accept God's perfect love. God said you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God died for you. He came all the way out of heaven just for you and you and you and you and me and me and me. And me. You was that important to him. But we can't accept that. How can a loving for God forgive me for all I've done? That's what you tell yourself because you're dealing with rejection. It's hard. What I'm trying to say, the Spirit is trying to say, it's hard to receive God's love when you're offended and you're still dealing with the spirit of rejection. Right. Some of us can't get close to God and won't allow ourselves to get close to God because we think God is going to reject us even though we read it and it shows different. That's a bad boy. Hook, bait, rejection, offense. Point three, it's your decision. Just let me give it to you. It's your decision to be offended. Let me give some application, and I'm, I got you. It's your decision and my decision to be offended. It's a choice, y'all. You choose to be offended. Are y'all with me so far? It doesn't matter how many church service and Bible studies you attended, or how many books you've read, or how many hours you pray and study, if you are offended and in unforgiveness, and refuse to repent, that means to think different, my God, of this sin, you have not come to the knowledge of truth. Amen. You are deceived. That's called self-deception. 
Notice what I said. I don't care how many times you come to church. You could be signed up for mission ingredients. You could be in class. You could be whatever. I'm talking to leaders and everything up in there from the pulpit out. Mm, mm, mm. If you and I refuse to repent and release this unforgiveness and those that's looking online, it's not her. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah, God is talking to you too. Mm-hmm. See, somebody that's offended and wounded, they'll see that as pride. Instead of seeing God trying to provoke me to release so I can get free. Passion has a level of vulnerability. You got to be vulnerable. I'm talking to you. You that's looking right at me. I'm pointing straight to you that's online looking. You have a choice. You can choose to be offended or you can choose to be free. That's your choice. Even those that sit in here that don't go here no more, you made a choice. You still got to answer to God, though, for that choice. Many of us has been serving the Lord passionately and have come into difficult life situation because of being mistreated by wicked, this is where I bring God help you, by wicked men and carnal Christians. All of us got some form of wickedness and carnality in us. So people are going to make mistakes. People are going to say things. People are going to frown. People ain't going to act right, talk right, because we are all a mess on our way to progress. If the church can understand, as Pastor Michelle said in the leadership meeting, the second greatest commandment is to love thy neighbor. If you understand, people are going to make mistakes. People are going to do things and say things. My God, that don't mean that they don't love you or that don't mean they don't care about you. But again, we filter everything. If somebody say one wrong thing to us that we feel is wrong, we feel like they don't like us. Yeah. Or they're out to try to hurt, them, hurt us. You know why? Because we filter everything through pain. We filter. We Christians, but we're not healed. That's why going to church and jumping and screaming and shouting all the time ain't setting nobody free in their soul. <sighs> okay, so, so wicked men and women, carnal men and women, has hurt you. Many are wounded, hurt, and bitter, but don't realize it. Mm. Don't realize it, that they have taken the bait. If you become offended, you will be taken captive by the enemy to fulfill, watch this, I got to give you this. If you are offended and you choose to stay offended, my God, you and I will be taken captive, my God, to fulfill, my God, the enemy's purpose and his will. Now, how is it that we Christians, but we are working for the enemy? We are not fulfilling our purpose our spiritual assignment, but we are fulfilling the enemy's purpose and the enemy's yeah. will. Lord, help our souls. Taken captive when you have taken the bait, accepted the hook to be offended. The enemy is using you and I to advance, pastor, to advance. Look at me. To advance, Pastor, his kingdom, not God's. That's a terrifying thing. <sighs> Lord, have mercy. And that is not in my notes. Somebody, all of us need to understand that. If we are captive, the enemy is using you and I to advance. So guess what? So if you are advancing his kingdom, his purpose, his will, that means you're attracting people to you and you contaminate them. So it's one apple contaminating the whole apple. Yeah. Propagating, gradually, mm, gradually pushing the kingdom of darkness through the body of Christ. <sighs> Being offended can ruin every area of your life. Please write that down. Please, I'm through. I am. I'm about to. Thank you. It can ruin every area. Many are unable to function, church, properly in their purpose because of the wounds and hurts that offenses have caused. You can't even function properly 
in your purpose, in your assignment. We being used to, 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 to advance the kingdom of darkness when we offended, dealing with rejection, all these hurts and pains, my God. We cannot even function properly. My God, any form of leadership, even as a mother, if you're so messed up from stuff, you can't even lead your children right. You're just passing that stuff down. You're sowing that stuff into your children. You're sowing dysfunction. You're sowing the spirit of rejection, all that type of stuff, into your children. And you wonder why sooner or later that seed has taken root and you wonder where in the world is this behavior coming from? Look what you've been speaking in the atmosphere. Look what you've been planning in your children's mind.